happy day children in the previous sessions we discussed about the first six fundamental quantities today we are going to have a look at the seventh fundamental quantity for understanding the seventh fundamental quantity we must have an idea of plane angle solid angle and their si units you know a circle is a two dimensional shape and the radius is the line segment joining the center of a circle to the point on the circle and is denoted by the letter r arc of a circle is a portion of the circumference of the circle and is denoted by the letter s or l s because it is a segment of the circumference of a circle and l is nothing but the length the angle subtended by an arc at the center of a circle in a plane is called plane angle it is denoted by the greek alphabet theta theta is given by the formula theta is equal to l by r that is the ratio of arc length to radius the si unit of arc length is meter and the si unit of radius also is meter so both meter gets cancelled and it becomes a dimensionless quantity even though it is a dimensionless quantity plane angle is measured in different units like second minute degree radian and revolution the si unit of plane angle is radian and is abbreviated as rad we can witness plane angle by an activity cut a slice of carrot and measure its radius from the center measure an arc in the circumference of carrot slice in such a way that the arc length is equal to the radius join both the ends of the arc with the center of the circle so here we have measured an arc in the circumference of the carrot slice in such a way that arc length is equal to the radius and then join both the ends of the arc with the center of the circle you will get an angle equal to 1 radian so 1 radian is the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc that is equal in length to the radius of the circle the next question that arises in your mind is how many radians are there in a circle yes there are 2 pi radians in a circle what is the formula for circumference of a circle yes it is 2 pi r so if the formula for circumference of the circle is 2 pi r then how many number of arcs are there in a circle there are 2 pi number of arcs in a circle so how can we find the value of that if you substitute the value of pi as 3.14 then you multiply 2 with 3.14 you will get 6.28 arcs 6 arcs equal to the radius of the circle plus 0.28 times the radius of the circle so we have 6.28 arcs in a circle how many degrees are there in a complete circle yes it is 360 degrees how many radians are there in a complete circle 2 pi radians since there are 2 pi arcs the angle subtended by 2 pi arcs is equal to 2 pi radians so we can say 2 pi radians gives 360 degrees then pi radians will give 360 divided by 2 180 degrees and pi by 2 radians will give 90 degrees or one radian what will be the value when pi radian is equal to 180 degree then one radian will be equal to 180 divided by pi or otherwise 180 divided by 22 by 7 or we can say it as 180 into 7 by 22 which gives us the value as 57.295 degrees so one radian is equal to 57.295 degrees let us try to understand the relation between degrees and radians by solving these two problems here we have to convert 60 degrees into radian so what is the relationship between radians and degrees it is pi radians is equal to 180 degree so 1 degree is equal to pi by 180 okay so 
we have 60 degrees is equal to pi by 180 into 60. So we have the value as pi by 3 radian. The second problem is we have to convert pi by 4 into degrees. Pi by 4 radians into degrees. Pi radians is equal to 180 degree. So pi by 4 radians will be equal to 180 divided by 4 degrees. So we get the value as 45 degrees. Imagine a watermelon which is a perfect sphere and a three-dimensional structure. The angle subtended by a surface at the center of a sphere is called a solid angle. So what is a solid angle? The angle subtended by a surface at the center of a sphere is called as a solid angle. Look at the examples of solid angle. Light produced from a point source is an example of solid angle. A carrot is an example of solid angle. A birthday cap is an example of solid angle. Water poured from a container also falls in the form of a solid angle. Liquid injected by a syringe also appears as a solid angle. Solid angle is denoted by a Greek letter omega and is given by the formula d omega is equal to a by r square. The SI unit of area, a is nothing but area and r is nothing but R square is nothing but radius square. The SI unit of area is meter square and the SI unit of radius is meter. So R square will be meter square. Both gets cancelled and this also becomes a dimensionless quantity. But the SI unit of solid angle is steradian and it is abbreviated as SR. A steradian can be defined as a solid angle subtended at the center of a unit sphere by a unit area on its surface. Here unit sphere has radius which is equal to 1 meter and unit area means area that subtends the solid angle is equal to 1 meter square. As there are 2 pi radians in a circle, how many steradians are there in a complete sphere? Yes, there are 4 pi steradians and 4 pi is approximately equal to 12.566 that is when you multiply 4 into the value of pi 3.14 you will get the value approximately equal to 12.566. Let us summarize the difference between plane angle and solid angle. Yes, plane angle is the angle between the intersection of two lines or planes and solid angle is the angle formed between the intersection of three or more planes at a common point. Plane angle is two-dimensional. Solid angle is three-dimensional. The SI unit of plane angle is radian, which is denoted by RAD. And the SI unit of solid angle is radian, which is denoted as small s, small r. Plane angle and solid angle were known as supplementary quantities but not as base or derived quantities. You should know that plane angle and solid angle were known as supplementary quantities. So why they were called as supplementary quantities? Why they were not called as base or derived quantities? As I discussed with you before that both are dimensionless quantities. Okay. So first you should know why it was not called as base quantity. Angle is the ratio of two lengths, namely arc length to the radius, making it a dimensionless quantity. And angle is not a base quantity because it is defined by another base quantity that is length. And it is not a derived quantity also because derived quantities have dimensions, which is not the case where for angles. Thus, they were called as supplementary quantities. So now you understood that they were called as supplementary quantities. But do you know what happened in the year 1995? In the year 1995, plane angle and solid angle were declared as dimensionless derived quantities. Now it's time for us to start with the seventh fundamental quantity, luminous intensity. See this picture. Cricket match gets stopped due to bad light conditions. What is going on? Have you seen these scenes on the television? What is the umpire doing? Is he taking a selfie? 
No, he is checking the intensity of light as perceived by the human eye by using an instrument called as photometer. It is also called as light meter or light intensity meter. So, photometer is used to measure the luminous intensity. In its digital display, it gives a direct value of luminous intensity. Then what is luminous intensity? Luminous intensity is defined as a luminous flux emitted from the source per unit solid angle. The SI unit of luminous intensity is candela, denoted by CD. A normal wax candle emits around one candela of light. When luminous intensity is defined in terms of luminous flux, then what is it actually? Luminous flux is the amount of light energy flowing from a source of light per unit time. It is denoted by the Greek letter phi. The SI unit of luminous flux is lumen, abbreviated as small m, small l, small m. One lumen is defined as the luminous flux of the light produced by the light source that emits one candela of luminous intensity over a solid angle of one steradian. In this diagram, if D phi is taken as luminous flux over a solid angle D omega, then luminous intensity can be given by I is equal to D phi by D omega. Now we can conclude that luminous flux per unit solid angle is called luminous intensity, which is denoted by the letter I. Hope you all understood the terms plane angle, solid angle, luminous intensity and luminous flux. I have posted assignments related to this topic in Google Classroom. Kindly complete it and post it like last time. Thank you for listening and cooperating children. Thank you.